students today we are also going to solve chemistry paper unit one okay you can see the date here 9th january 2020 and the uh, paper reference is wch 11 forward slash 01 and you can read the further information written in this paper but uh, you can use here scientific calculator or ruler okay you can read this instructions information and this paper is uh, 80 marks question paper okay and you can read advice now see section a answer all the questions in this section you should aim to spend no more than 20 minutes in this section means you don't have to spend 20 minutes enough because uh, each question carries only one minute it will take one minute to solve a single question because it's a, a multi-choice question you just have to take so you can take because you don't know which option is going to be correct so you have to think and you have to be solved a little bit so it therefore you can take one minute to solve one question okay so how many protons and neutrons and electrons are present in 37 cl minus ion okay as we know chlorine has two isotopes first is 35 chlorine uh, which have 35 atomic mass and the second one is 37 cl okay this is in 3 is to 1 ratio and after taking the averages of these two isotopes we get 35.5 and 17 cl this is atomic number this is average relative as we know already know the relative atomic mass okay relative atomic mass we can also say as or we can also understand is as average mass of chlorine of these two isotopes so atomic number of chlorine is 17 so number of protons and number of neutrons also 17 in chlorine atom but we have 37 chlorine ion so chlorine has 17 electron one minus extra is here so plus one more and you will get 18 electrons here so 18 electron 18 electron this is mass number so 37 is mass number and mass number is calculated as the sum of protons plus neutrons as we just increases the electron number we didn't change the proton so the proton will remain same as 17 so you can write here 17 37 is equal to 17 plus n you can subtract 37 minus 17 you will get neutron as a uh, 20 okay so 17 20 and 18 so here you will get c as a correct answer okay let me go on the next question c a sample of an element x contains only the isotopes shown these are the isotopes as we already seen chlorine has two isotopes this and this now an element x contains these five isotopes and their percentage abundance is also given to us okay in front of these isotopes so finding what is the relative atomic mass of x to three decimal places in this sample okay we have to calculate relative atomic masses how we calculate relative atomic mass calculate think relative atomic mass we have to do multiplying the atomic mass or mass number of this isotope in multiplied by this percentage abundance okay 58 into 68.077 plus 60 multiplies 26.223 and later on you can do the multiplication of 61 into its abundance then plus 62 into its its abundance plus 64 multiplied by its abundance and after uh, and adding all these divided by and then divide by 100 you will get your correct answer relative atomic mass as first a1 okay these you can also reject these two answer because it is clearly written here right three decimal places okay answer should be in three decimal places so uh, a and d can be the, your correct answer and you can reject b and c okay you can reject here and you can also mark you don't need to solve number of protons and neutrons as you calculated your protons oh, sorry electrons as in 18 and 18 as only in one option here is 16 17 21 so 18 is only have only option in see that's why you can directly say that uh, without finding the protons and neutron you can say your correct answer as c okay that's why you can save your time okay here you can save your time in all the questions because it is not necessary you will take 
one minute to solve each question like maybe you will take some question as uh, 30 seconds and later some questions you will take one and a half minute or two minutes so you have to manage your time okay now how many orbitals are there in a total the first three quantum shells of an atom so what is quantum shell if this is a nucleus you have one quantum shell you have second quantum shell and you have third quantum shell in first quantum shell we have s orbital in second quantum shell we have s and p and in third we have s p and d and as we know in first s has one this is one p has three orbitals from here s this is p has three and d has five one two three four this is five so this is five this is three this is one this is three one and one one two two plus three five five plus one six six plus 3, 6 plus 3, 9, 9 plus 5, 14. So, total orbitals will be 14 in first 3 quantum shells of an atom. Let's see question number 4. Which element in the P block and has atoms containing 2 unpaired electrons in the ground state? 2. First, we have to be talking about, we have, we are talking about, uh, P block, not D block, F block and uh, S block. We have, we are talking with we are talking only about p block so and uh, two unpaired electrons so lithium belongs to yes it is belongs to p block carbon belongs to p block and uh, sorry uh, lithium belongs to s block lithium belongs to s block and the carbon belongs to p block Fluorine also belongs to P block, but titanium belongs to D block. So we have to see only B and D, B and C. You can see here B and C. Okay, you can check these two options. So carbon has six electron and fluorine has nine electron. So we will first write the electronic configuration of these two elements. One is two, two is two. Now we left two uh, electron. And uh, it will be 2p2. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Here you, you can write 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5. Okay. Now these two we will write like this 1, 2, px, py, pz. 1 electron, 2 electron. Okay. And here you can say 1, 2, px, py, pz and uh, one two three four five so here you have only one unpaired electron and in this you have two unpaired electron so the correct answer will be b okay correct answer will be b now question number fifth first five ionization energies of an element in kilojoules per mole are now your first ionization energy is five seven eight Second ionization energy is 1817. Third ionization energy is 2745. Okay, fourth ionization energy is 11578. And fifth ionization energy is 14831. So, in first and second ionization energy, there is a gap of around uh, and gap of energy around around uh, I guess around 1250. You can use calculator and Check exact difference, but I'm taking the av around it's around 1800s and it's around 600, so 18 and 6, 1200 difference, and this is less than 600 and this is greater than 800, so more or less it will be about uh, 1250. Okay, and the uh, energy difference between third ionization energy and second ionization energy is about of uh, I guess uh, 900 kilojoules per mole kilojoules per mole but in fourth and third ionization energy there is a gap of 800 kilojoules so this high jump this high jump means the element has three unpaired electrons in their last shell or it means the element has three three electron in their last shell so uh, sodium has one electron in their last shell magnesium has two electron in their last shell 
silicon has four but aluminium has three because its atomic number is 13 and you can write this two eight and three this is in third quantum shell three unpaired electrons and uh, three unpaired electrons are there so that's why the element will be aluminium you have to uh, decide you have you in this question you have to decide it which element it is okay the ionization energy is five ionization energies of this element is given to us and now we have to decide because uh, this high gap says there is a there is a gap of jump of these shells okay second shell this is third shell this is second shell because of these shell gap this is a high energy jump okay the theory question we will uh, discuss and when we will uh, read when we will uh, learn theory but here we are just solving our question paper so we are not going to deep in the theory just understand yeah, that c will be your correct answer okay now question number six what is the relative formula mass of hydrated barium hydroxide hydrated barium hydroxide means it is uh, there is water is added in barium oxide barium hydroxide this is a barium hydroxide ba OH twice but it is hydrated means there is some uh, water molecules present in this hydro barium hydroxide so we have to calculate it uh, their relative molecular relative formula mass okay the MR of the elements are given to us so uh, barium is 137.3 okay plus oxygen 16 plus 1 and into 2 because here is uh, 2 is written now plus a plus 2 plus 16 okay and after calculating all after calculating we will get d as our correct answer okay an 11 gram sample of anhydrous sodium sulfate anhydrous sodium sulfate anhydrous means there is no water added in this is dissolved in deionized water to form 70 centimeter cube of solution okay deionized means you cannot write the water like this H plus ions and OH minus ion okay it is purely water in H2O form it is like this so this much 11 grams so first we have to uh, what is the concentration in moles uh, per decimeter cube the aqueous solution formed so first finding uh, the concentration we have to find the moles of uh, anhydrous sodium sulfate so the mole is 11 gram divided by the molar uh, MR mass of sodium sulfate that is 1242.1 this is the number of moles and after calculating the number of moles we have to divide okay we have to divide this by the volume of the solution okay so molality or this is molality this is nothing but molality so molarity is calculated the number of moles present in one liter of solution one liter of solution okay one liter of solution so here we can say 11.12142 this and divided by its volume in decimeter cube first you have to convert this in decimeter cube because you have to find in decimeter cube so 70 centimeter cube can be written as 70 into 10 raised to minus 3 decimeter cube so from here you will get 7 into 10 raised to minus 2 decimeter cube so you can write here 7 into 10 raised to minus 2 and after again calculating after calculating you will get 1.1 as your correct answer okay now question number 8 which of these ionic compound would be expected to have highest melting temperature from calculating highest melting temperature it depends on the force between these uh, atoms the force between these two atoms okay and the electrostatic force between the atoms is uh, the k q1 q2 upon r square the q1 q2 are the charges on this ele in these elements and r means the difference between okay the nuclei okay these two nuclei distance between these two nuclei so uh, Na has plus 1 and fluorine has minus 1 but Mg plus 2 oxygen minus 2 K plus 1 Cl minus 1 calcium plus 2 sulfur minus 2 so A 
and C has minus one, minus one, plus one charge, minus one, plus one charge. So their product will be one only. Okay. And uh, their size doesn't depend because uh, when we compare NA, F or uh, MgO, so the product of charges will be higher in this and four time. It will be four time because one into one and this is two into two. So it will be four time greater than this. Okay. So we can reject, we can reject A and C option and we will consider B and D because both have positive two charges positive two or positive two minus two minus two but in D option the size of magnesium plus two and calcium plus two the size of calcium is greater and because, uh, according to our formula the it is inversely proportional to the force is inversely proportional to the distance between the atoms or nuclei so if this size of an atom or ion is greater it means their difference between the nuclei will also be greater so overall the division will be less so from here what we get as a greater quantity as magnesium oxide so from here uh, correct answer will be b question number nine which of the following compound has greatest covalent character okay because all the four options are ionic compound but we have to check which of the following has greatest covalent character so finding the covalent character okay uh, as we already studied that smaller the cation okay smaller cation and larger anion larger anion means there will be greatest covalent character so first we have to check uh, the smaller cation mg plus 2 because mg plus 2 mg plus 2 and ba plus 2 ba plus 2 so first we have to decide which one will be smaller ba plus 2 or mg plus 2 so from here we get as uh, mg as smaller one so b and c will be not our correct answer okay b and c will not be our answer uh, c or d c or d will not be our answer answer can be a or b so now we have to check which anion is larger okay which anion is larger f minus or iodine minus so here you will get iodine minus as a larger one so iodine one as larger magnesium is smaller smaller cation larger anion so greatest uh, covalent character so from here we got b as a right answer okay so let's see question number uh, question number 10 this is barium chloride reacts with sodium sulfate okay barium chloride reacts with sodium sulfate uh, barium chloride aqueous plus sodium sulfate aqueous gives you a uh, barium sulfate this is a precipitate a uh, white precipitate plus two NaCl aqueous the MR of all the compounds are given okay first question a what would you see when this reaction is carried out okay what we will see when this reaction will carry out so option a blue solution turns colorless no effervence no no visible changes no uh, white precipitate yes because a uh, white uh, barium sulfate is barium sulfate is prepared and its color is white a precipitate is formed okay so this is correct answer d what is the ionic equation of this reaction ionic equation means you have to write this in ion form means ba plus aqueous ba plus 2 aqueous 2 chlorine minus aqueous 2 na plus aqueous plus sulfur aqueous gives you you cannot write this as breaking point because it is a solid okay so you have to write this as baso4 solid and uh, 2 na plus 2 and 2 cl aqueous so 2 na aqueous 2 cl aqueous will get cancelled out okay and here you will get a uh, barium aqueous plus so sulfate aqueous barium aqueous plus sulfate aqueous gives you barium sulfate okay yeah c option option c will be correct answer now with now what is the maximum mass of barium sulfate that could be produced from 0 0.5 gram of barium chloride in this reaction okay 
uh, 0.5 gram so first you have to check the coefficient this means one mole of barium chloride reacts with one mole of sodium sulfate to give one mole of uh, barium sulfate and two moles of NaCl so if you are taking one mole you will it will be it will be one mole if it is one mole it is pre pro preparing one mole if it is two mole so it will prepare two mole so first you have to find out the number of moles uh, we have taken so number of moles number of moles of barium chloride is equal to number of moles of number of moles of barium sulfate formed so 0 0.5 grams divided by its mr and its mr is 208.3 it will be equal to the moles so okay and uh, we have to find the maximum marks so maximum marks maximum mass will be mass and this this mole is not what the maximum mass divided by its mr mr of barium sulfate so maximum mass into 0 0.5 5 to 8 0. 0.3 into mr of uh, barium sulfate mr of barium sulfate is mr of barium sulfate barium sulfate 233.4 233.4 233.4 and after calculating you will get c as correct answer okay now what is the atom economy by mass for the formation of barium sulfate in this reaction so it is calculated by using the formula that uh, this is economy you have to like uh, economy economy means the mass of barium sulfate divided by total mass of product so uh, the mass of this is barium is this and uh, the mass of this produced plus the mass of NaCl produces so after calculating you will get the mass of NaCl as 0 0.28 okay 0 0.28 and after calculating this you will get C as correct answer okay now question number 11 which of these forms of carbon does not contain delocalized electron so in this type of question let's suppose you don't know the correct answer but you can reject some of the options like graphite you can reject because you know uh, graphite has uh, some delocalized electrons you don't know which do not contain uh, okay but you know which can which contains so this contains because uh, we have already read about the graphite that it conduct electricity we also can read about that the graphene also conduct electricity we do, didn't study much about this c60 furnace or diamond but if you let's say you can reject these two options and you left with two options diamond and c60 but you can think about that diamond we never heard that diamond conduct electricity or not so by that you can just guess one of the answer but uh, you can reject these but if you uh, don't reject this you have four options and it maybe you will put c d but after reading carefully you can reject these two options and left two option can be chosen b or a so let's say uh, a is the correct answer because diamond does not conduct electricity or because does not conduct electricity because it does not have a uh, delocalized electrons like uh, graphite or graphene or this one so diamond are diamond is our correct answer now which of these molecules is polar now see uh, option number a option b option c and option d so for solving these you have to you, you should have the idea of structures of these compounds like uh, what is the structure of this of2 okay bf3 cf4 and uh, pf5 so after getting the structure you can decide the polarity or dipole moment of these uh, okay compounds so pcl5 exists like this 
triangular plane are so in triangular these will cancel out okay and this one is up, up and this one is down that's why the overall effect of dipole will get cancelled okay similarly this is tetrahedral shape and in tetrahedral shape also the effect gets cancelled this is a uh, triangular planar this will also get cancelled but this is a bent shape okay this is of bent shape so this structure is like bent shape okay and there is a uh, some uh, electronegative difference fluorine has a uh, electronegativity of so fluorine of uh, oh yes fluorine has four and uh, oxygen has around 3.5 so there is a difference of 0.5 so this here the electron tendency will be towards the fluorine and here the towards the fluorine so the overall tendency will be downward dipole moment will be downward so this compound is polar compound okay now question number 13 which species has its correct shapes and bond angle shown so first the solving these type of question you you already have you should already remember these theory that the shape and angles so linear and 180 square planar 90 pyramidal 109.5 trigonal planar 120 so water has a bent shape of like this type of shape it's not linear so d can't be uh, d cannot be the answer okay ammonium ammonium has a structure of tetrahedral okay it's not a square planar or uh, ammonia has a pyramidal yes it's a pyramidal or it's a pyramidal or uh, this one it's triangular planar so this one is not correct ammonia is correct answer because it's pyramidal and its angle is this so you can write here like this and uh, this is ammonia and uh, ammonia has again ammonia structure is pyramidal but it angle is not this because ammonia structure is like this ammonia hydrogen hydrogen and here is lone pair and as we already learned that this lone pair repel the bond pair of these two so the so it will be like uh, not 109 here angle becomes 107 so shape is pyramidal but bond angle is not this and now this one this is a carbon plus one it has only three carbon in outer shell so here and three bonded like this so you can say it's a trigonal planar and 120 angle so a would be our answer now question number 14 some equation for reactions used in reforming crude oil fractions are shown which equation is not balanced option a is a straight chain of uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 member chain this is also 7 member chain here also 7 carbon here also 7 carbon okay so which is not balanced okay uh, an open chain when become uh, cyclic two hydrogens become less if we will calculate the number of hydrogens in this open chain and here so two carbon will be less two hydrogen sorry carbon need two hydrogens will be less one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen here we got 16 here we got 14 so two hydrogens are here so making an open chain into a cycle two hydrogens loses okay when doing the branches it is it does not lose any any hydrogen here 16 hydrogen so here also will be 16 hydrogen this side will also be 16 hydrogen and seven carbon so it is balanced this one is also balanced uh, two hydrogens here 
and uh, 16 14 in this compound and 7 carbon 7 carbon okay 16 16 7 7 so in this one this one uh, this is already a cyclic compound so this is a cyclic compound but making one bond two hydrogens loses so here three bonds double bonds are created so three hydrogen creates so three hydrogens creates okay so this is also balanced but now see this one first we have to make this an open to from open to a closed chain like this so two hydrogens will be used and after making this okay to making after making this to convert this into this we have three carbons to lose but we have only one plus so there should be four carbon to be lost but here is only three that's why d is unbalanced okay a pure alkane fuel is burned in air which substance is not a possible combust combustion product okay when uh, hydrocarbon burns in oxygen it gives you carbon dioxide and water when it is completely burnt and it when it is burned halfly it produces carbon monoxide and water so you cannot get hydrogen if you will burn an alkane fuel now question number 16 what is the number of sigma bonds and pi bonds in one mole of this compound in okay if you will look as it as it is given to you you will say one two three four four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so you may can say 14 as uh, your sigma bonded and uh, 3 as pi bonds okay but it's not like it is given to us there are some hydrogen bonding okay here three hydrogen bond three hydrogen bond two hydrogen bond one single hydrogen bond okay one two three four so one two three one two one two one one two three one two one okay now we will calculate the number of sigma bonds one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three so twenty three now these dark one 23 hydrogens now these dark so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so it's 15 so i think there is a calculation mistake that would be 24 okay 24 plus uh, 15 it will be 20, 39 and uh, 3 pi bonding because these double bonds known as pi bonds so 3 pi bonds 1 2 3 39 and 3 pi bonds so v will be correct answer now question number 17 and this one is last question okay 17 the polymers shows are all made from single monomer which polymer is made from a monomer that has geometric isomers so this polymer is made from if we will break from here you can see and here and here so you can see this is made from H H now it will now double bonded and carbon CH3 CH so it is made this polymer is made from this polymer this compound you can make this is also like this okay like carbon car hydrogen here it will be double bonded ch3 okay here you can say it is made from carbon carbon ch3 ch3 and hydrogen hydrogen okay so these are not the geometrical isomers this is not geometric because these two are same here the three are same here also three are same here these two and these two are same and 
now the option number D it is like this and here you can say this carbon is made up of CH3 CH3 CH1 can be this and the other one can be this is cis compound and this is trans compound okay so yes D is correct answer as it is it has geometrical isomers okay it has geometrical isomers so I hope you have understood all the 17 questions carefully in the next video we will solve uh, question section B of same paper okay thank you for watching guys